Okay, everybody. I wanted to talk about the five lures that we chose for last year. I had people that asked for some more details on each lure. So I'm going to give you some details. Uh, be quick on some of them that are more obvious and a little more detailed than the ones that uh, could use some explanation. First lure on the list was a spec rig or the tandem rig. Uh, if I were to give advice on anyone wanting to fish this area to start off, uh, I would tell them without question, go buy a spec rig and start using it. Spec rigs come in different sizes. We recommend the one quarter size. It's real easy to find the one eighth size, uh, but I find it too light for the areas we throw around. I would, without question, go with this one. And then if you need heavier ones, uh, you make your own. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so spec rigs are great. These uh, lures, when we go out, if we're going to throw spec rigs, uh, two people in the boat, as our general practice, we will have someone throw one color, let's say pink and white, and have the other person throw another color you know white and chartreuse or chartreuse any combinations of these uh white uh, i don't think in most cases it makes a difference sometimes it seems to make a little bit of a difference okay nice thing about spec rigs is they come pre-made they're relatively affordable and they're certainly easy to use easy to cast all that kind of stuff and the way this uh works is uh, you just basically that what they did is they took a length of line say 32 inches they tied a lure on each end and then instead of being tying a knot in the with them in the next to each other they just offset it they just come up a length and then tie a loop there and i'll show you how we're going to do that we'll go through that and that offsets it okay so you have two lures hanging off one piece of line okay works real well with the spec rig you can hook berkeley gulp swimming mullet to it you can hook uh, um, shiners to it you could hook anything a piece of bait or anything just like you you know would add anything to it. Um, the gulps tend to be a little bulky, and and honestly, I didn't think they would really work until my buddy um, Doug started doing it, and uh, he started catching flounder immediately with it. It, it just worked. So uh, you just have to cut them, uh, put them in the hook a little bit short. Uh, maybe a three-inch uh, mullet would even be better. But uh, anyway, works real well. You can throw these everywhere, and they catch most every fish. Doug even caught a tall tog on the South Jetty with it last summer, and it's on one of our videos, uh, with nothing on it, just went by them. Uh, that's a little bit of a stretch, but, you know, they're great for the uh, fish that swim around here. Bluefish, shad, uh, it's the only lure I would use for shad, to be honest. Um, it's all you need. Uh, bluefish, rockfish, flounder, uh, you could tip them if you want. We, we've caught every single one of those fish with nothing on these except this exact spec rig, one quarter ounce thrown. Uh, now, there have been occasions when the bluefish bite these off, okay? So this is just some, you know, I don't know if it's 20-pound mono, 30-pound mono, whatever, on here. Uh, and it's not heavy enough. It gets chewed through. So we, we began making our own, okay? One example of that would be this setup here. This is a tandem rig. It's not using spec rigs. It's just using regular jig heads. And you could tip this with any soft plastic that you would like, okay? Okay. Um, this is a regular length of 30 pound fluoro um, and you can see here another one as well see any combinations is what i'm trying to get across to you guys you know here's a my spec rig got chewed up so this is an old used used spec rig still works uh, but the line was all gnawed up by a fish uh, so i cut it off and tied on a different one here if you put a little uh, grub tail on this like a z-man or um, anything like that I mean, the fish love these things, you know, and what's nice about this too, is this is a half ounce head and then a quarter ounce head on this side. And these two, you can combine to increase weight, which will help you cover their water column, right? So this one right here is a half and a one on this setup right here. Here's the, here's the one ounce red jig head and here's the half ounce. All right. So, you know, you can combine them and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Okay. Real quick. Another one ounce and a quarter ounce here. Take a length of, of fluoro or mono. Mono is just fine. This is 80 pound mono. And my buddy Doug gave me this to use when the bluefish were biting us off. So just on both ends, tie it, tie it together. Okay. And I'm going to speed up here. I'm just going to do improved clinch knot or cinch knot. I forget how it's called. Just run it through here real quick. I would normally lubricate this, but you get the idea here. Okay. So tie one end. Let's tie the other end. And I would say probably, you know, around, start with, you know, around 32 inches or so of length to start it. Okay. Okay. So you have both of these tied, right? Uh, on each side. So you just, what you do is just hold it out and make them equal distance and then just pull, pull it to separate it. You know, here, I'm going to separate them out and make them an offset distance here. Okay. So this one is this distance. 
This one's about this distance here, okay? Now from there, I just take that loop that we've made. We've pinched that down, okay? Right, we've pinched this, and we're just going to do a simple double loop over itself. One, two, I think it's called a surgeon's uh, loop. Just pull that all right up, make it nice and small, and pull on it. I pull it on, on this end, and then a quick little pull on the other ends to tighten it. That is it. After that, tip it with whatever you want, soft plastics or bait or anything. Toss these out. You can adjust it to the weight you want. So now I have a one and a half ounce setup here. Trim your tag ends. And you're ready to roll. These are interchangeable. They're, they're nice too. So if a piece of this line gets chewed up, you can just cut it, retie as well. You know, within reason. You still have to have a little bit of length. Anyway, that's about it. Throw it out there and enjoy it. You'll catch fish. Tandem or spec rig, number one setup, number one lure in the bay for Mary and I, based on our experience. Next up, number two. All right, guys, number two on the list. Some kind of swim bait, okay? Uh, without question, probably our favorite way to fish is with the swim baits. Uh, I find the variety to be exciting. Uh, fish readily bite them. Uh, we've caught a lot of good fish with, with them. In the bay here, we tend to use between a half ounce and one ounce sized jig head. You would go heavier if you got into some deeper water. You could go lighter if you got into even shallower water or you do a tandem setup with the swim baits, whatever. Most of you guys are going to know all about this kind of stuff. You know, any any kind of, you know, this is a four inch swim bait, uh, six inch swim bait. This is a seven inch eel from Tsunami. Anywhere from that four to six inches, seven inches is what we're going to throw. The vast majority, it's going to be right around five inches. Uh, the, the famous Roy rig here is a five inch swim bait on his special jig head. Um, and this is uh, Mary's favorite lure. If she was in a tournament and had to pick one lure to fish swim bait, uh, she, this would be the lure she'd pick and throw. And for good reason, it's a proven, uh, proven uh, to be effective out here. You would be great in using it. Um, but the other things work. These eels have been great for us in the spring. They've been terrible for us in the fall, but in the spring, they have absolutely been knockout. These are more recent ones we've started getting from the Lead Pot in Dagsboro, Delaware. Uh, we buy these from those guys over there. And uh, I'll just show you, you know, of course, rigging it's real simple. We like a paddle tail. Just take a guess where you want it to come out. Just take your time, thread it right down the middle. And then I just watch it come out the other end in the center. Push it all the way down. Twist it, make sure she's looking good. I like my lures pressed up against here. If From freshwater, you had to have it pressed right up against there for it to be effective. And saltwater, uh, my good friend Rob, he, he doesn't even care about that. And he's highly effective. So that's nice to see because I can get pretty crazy about how in line it is and all, even though I think it, it's great to do it. But uh, he puts them on well. He just doesn't always slide them up and uh, it do doesn't need to happen. So uh, Mary's favorite this fall was this nuclear chicken type color. Uh, same thing, half ounce here. And then just bring it out and go from there. Now, one thing we do, too, is we brush on some Gorilla Glue. I have to get the brush on Gorilla Glue, put a dab on there, and then push this on in here up real nice. And then you're ready to go. So you get the idea. Uh, you know, these gotchas work real well. These are small size and make a bigger size. It's a quarter ounce head. Again, you could, you're could you welcome to tie two of those together and run them. They would work just fine. These Riptide lures uh, are a little more fragile, but they're pretty affordable. And they hold the glue fairly well. This is an Elias V swim shad. You can get these off of Amazon. He's got a YouTube channel. He kayak fishes, does a great job. And these shads are great. I like this flat back on here on the on the front of it. Um, and the larger one ounce lures that I put on here, uh, the triangle shaped ones like match up real well with it. Kind of lines up real well. But uh, overall, I like the Roy rig and this rig. We throw this a lot. Uh, you can dip these in special sauce. I like the contrasting colors. So does Rob. I think there is something to that. So don't hesitate to dip them or paint them or whatever. Uh, the swim shads work, but you get the idea. Soft bait, half ounce to an ounce. As a general rule, four to six inches. Most of the stuff we throw is near five inches. Uh, swim baits, number two. Go for it. Okay, lure number three, the fish finder rig. First rig we were shown by a gentleman in Ocean City who catches a lot of good fish around here, Bobby. And uh, he showed us how to do this. This is I uh, use primarily for flounder. This would be a great setup for any live bait that you're going to uh, put on the bottom. Uh, this would be what I would recommend if you're using live bait. Uh, uh, but you can use fake bait as well. Here's the general idea. I'll show you a graphic of it. Uh, it's pretty simple. You have your main line here. You, you take the fish finder. So your main line. 
Take your fish finder, run it through it. On the other end of the main, main line, you tie a barrel swivel. Past that, you would tie on like about 36 inches or so, give or take, 36 inches of fluoro. You would snell the hook. This is a 4 hook. It's the main one I use. I'm, 4 is about all I use here in the bay. Um, snell this hook, and then you'd put some attractant on it. Certainly hook minnows through the lips, shiners through the eyes. Uh, the Z-Man baits would be wonderful. A swimming mullet from Gulp is great too. And this is just an example. You, know, you get the idea of put anything on the end of this. Uh, people will take uh, bluefish strips or flounder belly or whatever, and you can drag this right along the bottom and uh, catch fish. The idea behind it again is to, when you put the weight on it, you can change different weights based on this little uh, snap or this big swivel here. Uh, the idea is you're just dragging along the boat um, and then when a fish hits it, you can open your bail and just let some of that main line go through here and provide no resistance to the bait side of it, the hook side of it, so the fish will commit to it and chew on it and give you time to set the hook, okay? So that's the idea. Um, few pieces to it, okay? You need various weights. You need this fish finder type of swivel setup, okay? Snap. You need a length of fluoro with a snelled 4-0 hook or something like that on the end, okay? And on the other end, just do that same two-loop knot I just showed in the uh, in the tandem rig, okay? Just tie two loops on it, tighten it, and cut it, okay? Um, real simple. After that, uh, and, you, and you need the, the barrel swivel to attach the two ends to it, okay? Some people I've seen will put like a bead on an end here just to protect this knot from getting banged around. Uh, it's certainly not a bad idea to put a bead right on that barrel, you know, on the main line so it, this little finder doesn't go smacking up against it and weaken it. I think if you're in a serious fishing, serious fish situation, probably a good thing to do. Pretty simple. Live bait, fish finder rig works great. If you drag anything behind that uh, looks enticing to fish that are on the bottom, which is the vast majority of fish here in our bay, uh, you're going to get uh, bites. You're going to catch fish. You could use pieces of finger mullet. You know, uh, there's just, you know, you get the idea. Any cut bait, any live bait, uh, any other bait. You can also make these ends very fancy too, of course. I don't have anything fancy on it. You could put uh, spins on this. You could put beads on this. You could put... Um, some deer tail on this, you know what I mean? You could you could dress this up to make it very fancy, and that would be very enticing to a fish as well. So, you know, all kinds of attractants you can add right to this. And if you look online, you can find all kinds of ways to make these, but you get the idea. The fish finder rig, superb thing to use in the bag, especially with live bait, uh, and it's a very easy uh, setup to use, and you'll catch a lot of fish with it. All right, guys, number four on the list, bucktails, any type of bucktail. Um, the lead pot makes some really nice bucktails now. We bought a big order from them Black Friday, uh, but we've used Spro traditionally. Uh, but the lead pot has you know some really good prices, so I like using them if I can, of course. So bucktail, super versatile. You know, everyone's heard of a bucktail. Everyone's used a bucktail, but the bucktail has a lot of versatility in it. You know, the thickness of the bucktail here will affect buoyancy. So something that's thinner will fl will sink better. Something that's got more bulk to it. Uh, looks better, it looks thicker in the water, also floats more, and you can use that to your advantage to get to the depth you want. I always use a trailer almost every single time, and it can be anything. You know, these are just six inch curly tail grubs here. This is this is a leftover piece from a swim bait. So after so many fish chew up on the swim bait, you know, it gets yanked off the jig head on the soft baits, you know, it gets to be almost unusable. All I do is literally take a piece that take the old one off, save it, and cut it. And then I reuse it again as an end for the bucktail. And this, this is just a great setup. It's simple. One ounce bucktail. You can see it's been beat up, hit, hit a lot of stuff. Um, and then we throw it and uh, retrieve it back. And this provides the action. I've had great luck with this lure. Mary's had tremendous luck with this lure. So um, you can use those. Uh, here's heavier sizes too. You know, this is a two ounce. You can get the three ounces, you know, three quarter ounces. We know we're going to throw anywhere between those. This is a, shed, a bunker colored one with the little four inch on the end of it. This caught a really great weak fish this spring uh, from Brandon. He caught it on this type of setup here. So it was really, really good. So a uh, lot of versatility. And when I show you the next step, uh, the next number five, um, that uses this bucktail a lot. That scenario that I'll show you, you know, the bucktail gets used for that as well. As well. So thrown by itself, uh, it's, it works great, but it also really goes hand in hand with the next setup, you know, um, 
the easy teaser rig that I'm going to show you. But the bucktail is highly useful. Uh, one thing, they, they can cost a little bit of money, um, but I think they're really worth it because the the hook and this nice head, you know, kind of give you a little bit of protection from your line. So I think you get a little less chance of get, getting bit off as well. Um, it just has a bit of heft to it. It's got some quality to it as well. And just, I feel good when I have a fish hooked on a bucktail. I just feel like I'm going to get them. So I like that too. I have a lot of confidence with the bucktail. We're relatively new to the bucktail, but uh, if any of you guys know John Skinner, you want to read his books and uh, listen to, watch his YouTubes and follow him. He is uh, a great fisherman here in the mid-Atlantic. Uh, you want to do what he says, but he, he knows all about the bucktail. It's a great lure, number four. All right, guys, fifth and final lure or setup I want to show you is one of, this is probably one of the newer ones for me, and I'm probably most excited about this one out of all of them. It gives me, I think, the most flexibility. It gives me a lot of options. I love playing around with it. Uh, and this is just the uh, the simple teaser rig, okay? Basic teaser rig, okay? Real simple. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it, okay? This is this is really really simple and fun okay so i'm going to take and loop just fold in half let me get to calm down fold in half here and i'm gonna do two loops here on the end okay one two again this is i've shown you this this is this is like simple super easy simple knot here right so I tie it on one end here on the other end i'm going to make a really large one okay Make a large loop and tie it. I don't think this knot is a very strong knot, by the way. I'm not saying it's the greatest setup out there. Don't get me wrong. It's got definitely is fallible on its knot strength. So big double loop knot, surgeon's knot on this end, okay? You have one on this end. And then somewhere in between, do the exact same thing. Fold it. and do two loops again, just like we did. So we have three loops made in this rig. They're all the same, they're just a little different size, okay? You wanna make the top one rather small, that's big, you can make a much smaller net. The middle one, just big enough to get the hook you plan to use through it, okay? In my case, 4.0, I use pretty much exclusively, and then a large loop at the end, okay? Pull that a little bit, get that knot all nice and, and tight in the middle, okay? So that's the that's the setup. This is what I use, okay? Again, most people are going to use a dropper loop in this middle, and I'm sure it's a much better quality loop. Uh, a knot probably has got better strength to it as well. I just don't fool with it. I haven't seen it make a difference. I, I don't I don't really think there's a need for it, but uh, I've had no issues with not using it. So this is just super fast. This is a great setup. You're on a boat and you're tog fishing. People get uh, hung up. You can tie this right up and get on rolling. It's real simple. So on this end, on the bottom one with the big loop, the one that's going to be in the bottom, you just pick whatever size weight you want. It can be truly just a you know bank sinker type of weight, or you could put a big you know jig head like this one, three ounces on, on here, and uh, put anything on the end of it. So if it's just a weight, you know, it's just going to go to the bottom. Then in the middle loop that you created here. But again, most people have a dropper loop here. I just do this surgeon's loop. You just, you just thread in, you just thread in a 4 hook, you know, right through here. I always try to have the hook pointing up if I can. So you just pinch it, loop it through, come through here. Pull it tight, and then there's your, that's it there, okay? Okay, and then on the top of it is this, that other loop you'd hook to your main line, Okay. And that's it. That's a simple setup there. Um, look how flexible this is. You take this one out here. You say we were using a, a weight bank sinker. Take it out. There's a jig head. Take it out. You just come right through here. You can use a bucktail. Great setup for a bucktail. Pinch this real good. Get through this little eye. Run it right on through. Come out the other side. Make it nice and pretty. Now look at what you got, man. You got your bucktail on the bottom bouncing around, and then above it, hook a Z-man to it, a gulp, you know, uh, anything to it. Um, and then just have this dragon on the bottom. You have this a little higher, and then the top loop on your main line. One thing you'll see Skinner do, and I'm a big fan of this, I love it, is he shakes this. So if you watch a video of me flounder fishing or him flounder fishing, Matt Ellis is another gentleman that uses this technique to great success, uh, and he's a local guy. Look him up, Matt Ellis. Uh, he uses it 
and just drop this on the bottom. The nice thing about this is so interchangeable. So I have a one ounce here. It's going to be times you're obviously going to drop to a half ounce. Sometimes you might drop to three ounces. This is a setup I use out in the ocean. I use this all the time. You know, I've got my 20 inch flounder on it, my personal best so far with this setup this spring with Harry. Uh, so put a little gulp on this end or whatever. See, man, put something on this end. Again, this trailer can be a piece of live bait. Put a piece of bluefish on it. Put a flounder belly on it. Put a, you know, whatever you have, a uh, piece of bluefish, uh, anything you're, you know, allowed to use. You know, I'm sure you can even put clam or something on it. Put a piece of shrimp. I don't think it really matters. It, it'll smell good. They'll like it. Uh, shake this along the bottom. Now, here's another setup here, okay? So there's, you know, one idea there. Here's one I made this spring. Uh, there's another older gentleman up north that I saw his video, and he basically, this is his rig, uh, give or take a little. Um, and it's the same exact idea, really. It's just a little bit kind of nicer looking, okay? And I think there's some flexibility in it. I use a tactical angler sw swivel tied with regular improved cinch knot uh, here. This is a crystal minnow, so this provides the weight. Again, put some kind of teaser on the end of this if you wish. Up a ways from it, let's call it a foot or so. Uh, I bought a teaser tee, Thunder Miss Lures, teaser tee here, okay? There it is, teaser tee, and it just spins around this little thing they make, and then you can put a trailer on this, um, put a piece of gulp on this or something like that. Uh, that's a great setup. You can change colors and all that, and then uh, tie this to your main line. Uh, this is really changeable. It's got a little more gear involved in it, you know, so there's a little more money invested in this, but no denying it's really beautiful looking and highly effective. So this, this, just this really teaser, simple teaser rig is great. Lots of, uh, options, lots of uses. I use it mainly in the ocean. I uh, do it for flounder fishing as well. Any video you see next year is going to have these types of setups with me using it unless I have live bait. And then I would use the fish finder rig, but this is great. Give it a try, experiment with it, and uh, most importantly, get in front of where these fish are, give them something good to look at, and they're going to hit your lure and you're going to catch some fish. I hope you guys have great luck this year. Uh, send me comments and all on what you guys catch and, and on what I'd love to hear. Good luck.